Yehovah Malak, Olam Olamat, Yehovah Malak, Yami Rakis, Yehovah Gadol, Makarian Tios, Yehovah Adonai, Yehovah Elohim, Kurios Tios Pantacreta, Kurios Tios Pistols, Elda et Ehova, El Emona Ehova, Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios, O Pantacreta, Baslios Basleon Kai Kurios, Kurion, Ehova da Barhalal, Elohim da Barhalal, Ehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura, El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos, Ton Christon is un ton Kurion, Kurion ni Mohagion Panta Crater, Gadol Gadol, Gebura, Zaan Logan Ogar Tautios, Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Jesus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, 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 Gadol, Gadol, Gebura, Ehova Ishmal Kam, Ehova Shamma, El Nakum Yehova, El Nakum Yapa, Natsak Israel La Sheker, Derek. Emunabakar Mishfat Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and ignorant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkano to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them, who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nurturing of this great and unique indwelling entering ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory, understanding the true glory of God the Father as we read in Psalms 79 verse 9 to cry out to say, Help us, O God, of our salvation for the glory of thy name, and deliver us, and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. As we were looking yesterday the word glory, it teaches you have to be a grown-up grammatias, and that's what it has to be in your body, and that's what you have to make every thought to grow up to be a grammatias one in Christ. And here also we have saying, for the glory of thy name. The English over here for is not the Hebrew. The word for is been used, dabar. The Hebrew word dabar, which has been translated for, doesn't mean to say for, but it meant to say the word. So here it has to be, word of thy glory in thy name. So the word the bar, which has been called to be for a matter or a word or an arrangement of the things, it meant to say it begins every thought 
in your body should be according to the thinking of Lord's mind. So that's the word he uses. Help us, O God, of our salvation. Word of glory of your name. Here the word translated for doesn't give you the essence. So glory and the word being together in the pictographical representation it meant to say scribes have to be growing up through the word of God and then the name of my Lord God will be glorified. If we haven't grown up to be scribes, if we haven't come up then there is no true glory. And he further says, deliver us and purge away. The word deliver again, it meant to say, not sell. And that meant to say, to rescue. So, no matter the pressures of life I have in me, I will be thy disciple. So deliverance will be for them who will be going to be the disciple of the word of God. So now believing in Christ, we have been told, as John 1 to well teaches to us in very simple words, that we are called to be the technia children of God the Father. So you are born, you have been given the power, the exuse authority, to understand that you are now the great deliverance of God in the sense, no matter how much of pressure it may be in your life, make up your entire body, mind and soul to be the disciple of the word of God. Because we have been stated in Second Corinthians, we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is the divine power of the word of God. Having to know the word of Lord God, we don't have tension, we don't have fear, we don't have worry, we don't have anxiety, we don't have mental attitude sins, because there is nothing that can fight against faith or the word of God. The Lord of God said, heaven and the earth will pass away, but his word will abide forever. So the simple plea, humble plea of the word of the Lord of God all the time, which we as pastor teachers, bona fide gifted one should teach to you is that grow up as grammatias, joining as disciples. So God the Father will deliver those who are really intending to be or coming up to their consciousness to remember that they have to be the disciple. The same thing in Ezekiel chapter 3 verses 17 to 21 we have been reading. Two verses given to the wicked categories of the men which is 18 and 19, and verse 20 and 21 has been given to the righteous standards of men. So here also we learn the importance as such how God the Father has made every believer to understand He is going to deliver them, those who are walking as disciples. Coming to be more specific in John 1 to 12, He gives us this great reason that we have been given the exercise authority to become the sons of God. So the word technia, again the same thing we look in Ephesians 5.1, as dear children, again in 5.9, as children of light, proving that which is acceptable in the sight of God, and forsaking all the things which are absolutely darkness, and having no fellowship with them, but rather reprove aglanko. And that aglanko process we have been studying. Behind every second of your thought, there will be 50 negative thoughts or 50 demands having to influence you not to come to the word of God. Every second you literally calculate, there will be more than 50 demands of operating behind you or having to influence you not to gather or to grow up in the word of God. And by that we meant to say the lust of flesh, the lust of eye and the pride of life, the world, the flesh, the devil, the unholy trio, or the unholy trinity to use the word. Trio means to say three. The world, the flesh, the devil, these three things. And they all come together so that you should not take in the word of God. You should not grow up in the word of God. Neither you should come back to understand what is a true deliverance in Christ. So that you can understand 
that if God the Father is the word of glory, because it is his name, that is Dabar, Kabod, Shamma, then Satan knows very well you will not care for it or you will not worry for it because you are going to enroll yourself in the faith. And faith is such kind of a greatest moving power of the Lord. There is nothing that can stand against faith. Because Apostle Paul teaches to us in First Corinthians 15, in Second Corinthians 13 as well, again, examine yourselves in verse 5, whether you are in faith or not, if not you are reprobates. And the word faith meant to say, doctrine. The same deliverance why God the Father gives you, not that you have to die like unbelievers. Unbelievers, he says in Ephesians 5, they are alienated from the life of God, from the life of God, so that they are walking in darkness. In Ephesians 4, 17 and following, he says, Henceforth be not like unbelievers who walk in the vanity of the mind, but rather, he says in Romans 12, 1, 2 and 3, to renovate the standards of our thinking and to renovate the standards of our thinking and to become that a great thinking through the original language of the scriptures, he says, faith. So when you're walking in such faith, your heart is fixed upon the Lord and there is nothing that can walk against you. And every believer should understand, though the unseen intensified stage of the angelic conflict runs behind us, we need not worry even a millionth of a second in our lives. When we are moving gradually from 30 to 60, from 60 to 100 percent of growth. You know, if you know my Lord 30 percent, then you are still having 70 percent of troubles. If you know my Lord 60 percent, you are still having 40 percent of troubles. If you know my Lord 100 percent, then you will know all things work together for good to those who love God, who are called according to His purpose because he has called us to witness either like Job or follow the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the ministry wherewith he has called us to go and preach the truth and make disciples of all the nations. So the problem is, the measure with which you measure, the same measure will be measured back. If you are sowing to the wind, you will reap war wind. If you are sowing to know the word of, to know the ways of the word of the Lord of a God, you will learn some doctrine, and that's how you can say, Lord, deliver us. Because there is nothing in this world that can walk against this greatest force, the force of faith. And you know very well in your consciousness whether your sins are purged. And you know very well whether you are having that right rapport with the Lord of a God or not, because your consciousness all the time judges you. Therefore, he says in 2 Corinthians 13.5, Examine yourselves, documents are put to test. Whether you are walking in faith or not. If it doesn't walk in faith, he says you are reprobates. So, dear brethren, why you need to be delivered? He says in the pictographical representation, saying that no matter whatever may be the pressure in your life, all the vigor and valor of your life, He delivers us so that we could be the disciples of the Word of God. And furthermore we read, And purge away our sins. The word purge away in the Hebrew is very, very important. That meant to say kapor, the day of atonement, what you call kapor, over here as you say reconciliation. So God the Father would purge away your sins after believing in Christ. Why we ask you to confess your sins and get back to the fellowship? Because purging away of our sins with the intention over here kapor meant to say you will be like a scribe or you will grow up into a scribe. That's the only reason why God the Father could atone you back, could cleanse you back. Because he said the words which I spoke to you, they are the ones that are going to make you clean. And in the sense of making clean, which is nothing but to follow the work of my Christ in making disciples of all the nations, wherewith God the Father teaches, join as disciples and grow up into grammar tears. So the word purge, copair, or day of atonement or a covering where God the Father would 
cover our debt or wrong for what purpose? The purpose is very simple. You have to be like a scribe. When you open up your mouth, your thinking should be like a scribe. And that's what Matthew 13, 52 should be a goal. Acts 14, 21 to 23, the work which Apostle Paul did after his death experience. The same thing what he gave a commission, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, go and make disciples of all the nations. So the day of atonement, what the people would be there, it was a chance for them once again when their sins were been accepted before God after the high priest order. First for him and then the sins of the entire nation Israel. It was a chance given to them so that they should once again go back and be under the instructions called to be Lamad, Mantano plus Ridasco, because that was the work of the priest which they have to teach them, the work of the prophets which have sent by the Lord to enlighten them. Therefore, Lord of God emphasizes in Hebrews chapter 8, in verse number 7, we have this word, because in verse 6 it says, a better covenant. In verse 7 he says, if it were not the fault, there would have been no need for us to have a second one. So what was the fault? The fault was that they after Yom Koper, or the Day of Atonement, they never reconciled back to become scribes, to become already scribes like Ezra 7.6. They never become scribes like the thinking of Isaiah, the way how he was. In Isaiah chapter 18, verse 20, he says, they don't have light in them. So before coming to verse 20, God the Father says, seal the law among thy disciples. So they are not ready scribes. A ready scribe is the one who goes to teach. It will be every day fresh. It will be as good as natural, not like a hypocrite who hacks. Because that's his great duty. His duty is to be like a scribe grown up and his work is to go and make disciples. That's the natural tendency of him. The same thing what we look in Apostle Paul's life, particularly in Acts chapter 17, to an unknown God when he discourses. The work of him, he goes there again to teach. He's able to say, I will show you who is that unknown God. He goes to the synagogues. The same thing what Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did. And the importance over here, what we learn, where there is no proper revelation of the word of the Lord of a God, as long as you have breath in your nostrils, try to fulfill the duty of Colossians 1.24, the mental agony of my Christ in not the vicarious sufferings like the cross, but the making of people to enlighten, to know what exactly is the standard of reaching the mind of Christ or completely conforming to the image of Christ. That's the only work, that's the only goal, what they have. Every pastor teacher duty should be that. Search out, find out, give them the right word of God. As long as your breath in your nostrils, because after you go out, you know, people on this earth, there's so much caring about the standards of the health and the life and the breath, what they breathe. But they're really not giving this life to God. The only reason why you breathe, the only reason why you stay in this flesh, to fulfill at least a little part, some part of you, which Christ our Lord our God paid to the church. In that he goes on to write in verse 25 and following, and he concludes in verse 29, in that he says, making every man to be perfect and complete. The mental agony of my Christ, wherewith he was depressed, in Mark 14, 33, he was amazed, greatly amazed, and he was depressed because he knew these people haven't reached the thinking of Christ. They haven't truly really understood the word kofar. So, they haven't made up their lives to open up their mouth according to the word of God. As a scribe who speaks in authority, as a scribe who has grown up to know the things of Christ. And not to get chameleon nature of color. But rather always being firm to the word of God and to the truth of God. So dear brethren, he says, deliverers and purgers. The reason he delivers, you have to become a disciple of the word of God. The reason he purges you to make you to understand what it has been failed in the first covenant. 
They weren't scribes. But God the Father intended every believer to be a scribe even in the past dispensation. That's what he said. Stop them not. Eldad and Madad. I wish all of them over here in the camp. They could be like them. But what happened, dear brethren? They did not execute it. <clears throat> As such today, the church age believers are also not able to execute. <clears throat> the thorough reason why they have to be delivered and why they have to be purged in. <coughs> so dear brethren, sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my Lord, my rock which we shall continue after this prayer. Because it is a must, day e, <coughs> that those who worship Lord of a God, he says in John 4.24, they have to worship Him in spirit and truth. Under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, and biblical truth because Numa Otheos is my God and since he is spirit it has been Dei it is a must that you have to worship him under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost under the standards of his truth so dear brethren after this prayer, we shall continue what God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in every past to learn from His infallible and inerrant Word. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is, O Lord, to have fellowship with Thee through the Word. Every day you come up with grace, O Lord, as you said in Lamentations 3. Every day is a fresh new thing. Your compassions fail not. You give us a chance to become, to deliver us, so that to understand that we have to be purged thoroughly to become scribes of the word. Under that great work of your grace, O Lord, much of the present Christendom is not involving to make disciples because they have not grown up into grammar tears. Yet, O Lord, you come up with grace to give them a chance so that the professing Christians, conventional Christians, nominal Christians, they should wake up to understand the real call of you on this earth. And the duty of us, O Lord, which have laid down upon our shoulders to be natural, to be true, and to do that which is right and good according to thy word, because you are Yehovah Sidkeno. And when you represent you, O Lord, it is nothing but what are the demands of the word of the Lord of a God which we should expound to these people so that they could change their mind, renovate the standards of their thinking, and they could walk in spirit under biblical truth. So, Father, as we study the things which are prepared for us on today's date in every day past, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Ghost would enlighten and challenge us by this message for the glory. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. Rather than worshipping Christ our Lord our God in spirit and in biblical truth, if you men love to walk in the oratory style or the gimmicks or the traditions of men, it's as good as to illustrate in a very simple way. Being natural is all the time natural, whether you have the sense what God designed to have a beard or the way how we appear. If you are not according to the standards of natural one, then you constantly need to look to appear the same way towards the world. If you don't have mustaches or beard, you love to keep it, so that you all the time, for three or four days, you love to shave off. And you want to maintain that. But if you're natural, there is no need for us to have attention to look every day, rising up and looking into the mirror and say, okay, today I should be like this because beard is grown up or mustaches have grown up. Another example, what I want to tell is very simple, dear brethren. 
the word of lord god what is been given for us in the exegetical standards of his mind in the original hebrew greek and aramaic it's natural though the heaven and the earth will vanish off it will appear the truth as it is you cannot change it no doubt how much you may modify it and today the people who are trying to live under the influence of under the influence of this denominational standards they are like the way how they are trying to maintain every two or three days looking into the mirror or every day as they wake up they want to look into the mirror their face and they want to find out but if it were natural there is no need for us to look into the mirror it would be the same the trends and the traditions may change 18th century everyone even if you would look ch mackintosh or even uh, j and darby or even many great men in the past they have this beard and mustaches even moody but when you come now mustaches have gone beard is gone so people may talk the traditions and the standards they go on for every 100 years they may talk but a man with the naturality what he is for example from the time of adam how god the father through the bible even he records about david incident about two persons whom he has sent out to spy when they cut off his beard they say wait till there your beard could grow up so when we find the same word in leviticus chapter 21 you shall not cut off the side hairs let it grow naturally not to be like a pagan so in all of these things when the naturality has been mentioned in your appearance to god then how much more we have to be natural enough to the word of god every day you love to look upon your mirrors you know how it is mirror is your people whom you are addressing and you love to impress them or your people who have appointed you to be in their church so you should appear for them to be the same you should appear for them to be like a pious gentleman and what all the attributes they have so that you shall not break them or harsh them and you what what you want to do you give them a uh, daubing them with untempered mortar style of preachings so if they say we are comfortable to come weekly one so you change the order of the bible into such kind of a way that they're comfortable so it's like a mirror what you love to appear again to them but if it is natural you wouldn't care whether they hear of or be you would tell them this is the rule this is the truth you accept it or reject it that's none of my business this is the truth and god the father appoints us to tell you what is there in the bible and not to go on to be comfortable with the mirror or to be comfortable with the people whether they save you in the church or pluck you out from the church what difference does it make because you're appointed the sharat orientation is from yehovah elohim our ministry has been appointed by the lord god not by men so if every minister would wake up to look what is natural what is exactly in the word of god what is exactly the demands of the mind of christ then they would truly understand the prayer what we are reading from psalm 79:9 where with he teaches the importance that the first one saying that lord god help us and why is mentioning the word help that meant to say the first word in the hebrew called to be azar already if you would look in the previous verses of this chapter he begins with saying lord that the heathen are come into thy inheritance thy holy temple they have defiled they have laid jerusalem on heaps and when he's praying this the dead bodies of the servants the men who give their life to preach the word of god they have given to be meat unto the fowls of the heaven we read this word fowls of the heaven every time we come you to remove your stumbling blocks we come you to ask and to listen the word of god satan comes to divert your mind that's what we were looking yesterday as well for every second if you are being handed over in the sense of targeted by satan one like 85000 fallen angels in the sense like the tasarian camp which came 
if you would calculate for every second, you will get minimum 51 demons behind you in the sense negative thoughts not to concentrate on the word of God. On the other hand, if you are into the hands of Ahitopal, though he has been called to be a pastor or to be a prophet at that time and his word was like the oracle or the word from God, he is, uh, he is taking with him 12,000 men. And if you would look over here, it would be two or three demons or three demons at a time. Because if it has been given in the hands of the standards of the unbelieving section like Satan, you will have upon you 51 different kinds of demons which are constantly making you not to concentrate on the word of God. On the other hand, if you are being given into Ahitopal kind of men where he demands to give me 12,000 men wherewith I can go and smite King David because now you are called to be anointed one of the Lord. Every believer has been made Revelation 1.6 to be kings and priests for Christ. So here, since you have been there in the standards now, false pastor teachers who do not have the bona fide gifts, who love to look upon the mirrors to be impressed, not the natural thing in the word of the Lord of a God, they will come and they will put upon you minimum two to three standards of false teachings which can completely divert out your mind. So these entire things, either 12,000 from the false pastor teachers or 185,000 under the guidelines of satanic thoughts, because anything which you don't have from the word of God is purely satanic. Therefore, we have been stated again and again, you shall know the doctrine and the doctrine shall set you free. That's very simple, dear brother. Whether you believe it or not, or believe or consider it or not, the fact is so simple in truth. If you are not being found in the word of the Lord of a God, you make it sure that the fowls of the heaven are being all the time making your churches or you to be out of the word of God and from the plan of God. So here, dear brethren, he says in verse 1, O God, the heathen are come into thy inheritance. The temple of the living Lord of a God, what we are now for Christ, it has been taken over by the heathen, heathen in the sense who do not know the word of God. Or your mind or your body or your thinking has been absolutely opening up your mouth, which is not in accord with the word of truth. Let's go back and ask a Christian, what is the hope you have in Christ? To answer back First Peter chapter 2 or chapter 3, you find that if anyone would come and ask you, what is the reason why you believe in Christ? Then you should be well prepared to tell them the reasons why you believe in Christ. And this is the will of God the Father, he says. So how many of them will answer or in the professing Christendom they can say that they have been real in the standards of the mind of Christ? How many of them can say that? How many of them can defend? How many of them can fulfill the verse of 1 Peter 3? Or in fact, how many of them can really tell they're carrying their cross every day and following my Christ? Carrying the cross every day doesn't mean to say you just take a log. No. Carrying a cross meant to say every day, preparing in your mind to come back and first take in nothing but the word of God, whether you drink water or eat food or not, that is none of your business. But first, morning by morning, as the word of Lord God cometh to wake you up to learn the word of Christ, be prepared to go and gather of your word of God every day. So that's the cross. First, giving not your time to the word of God. First, taking not the thinking of the mind of Christ in your world. You cannot go. So how many of them are really carrying their cross every day? But you know, the mirror-looking pastors or the way they love to impress every day, the same way how much, whether they have the mustaches or beard or not, so again, they have to shave it. Because they have to maintain that to the world. So they look constantly to the mirror. A natural one will be a natural. It doesn't need to look into the mirror. It doesn't even care about the hair to be combed. Because as natural he is, even though they talk about him after a thousand years or two thousand years, it will be the same natural because God designed it. When what you what you planned, you're planning yourself for every 150 years, the fashion of the world, the trends of the world, the things of the world to change. Some would come with such a hippie cutting, some would come with a bald head. And you know, really, the cuts of these people, the way how they maintain upon their hair, you know, if they would have done that to the hands or legs, they would know the pain. But since hair doesn't know the pain and their body doesn't understand the pain, 
so they think they can mould the hairs in whichever fashion they want, rather than looking natural. And they say we are dignified, we are really following the standards of Alexander because he was the one who came up to shave off the beard because the soldiers would be killed in the war. So it's okay. It's for their trend during the time to save the lives you might have done. But now why you men are following the same trends looking into the mirror? If you are really not natural, you love to look yourselves into the mirror if you are maintaining without moustaches, if you are maintaining without beard. So what you do, you love to look all the time into the mirror. So the point, what I want to illustrate is not that you be as you fashion, or because we don't want to intertwine with your personal appearance to guard up before men, but the point what I want to tell is, every two or three days when you're trying to maintain that same status, you're acting hypocrite to the core and not giving them what exactly are the demands of the word of God. Just go back and look, oh God, the heathen have entered into the temple. Go back and look in the believing mind of this man. If they're really believers... Can you tell them they're really believers? No, they are heathenic to the core. On the outward, they would have a tag of religion called that they're Christians. But inside, if you go back and look, they're absolutely outward, worse than pagan religion men. The works of darkness. The same thing what our Lord of God says in John 3.19. He says over there in very, very clear, simple terms. He teaches to us the point that they love not to expose the deeds. They love not. Though the light has appeared unto the world, though the word of Lord God has been given, and the word of Lord God emphasizes every day, go and train them up. No matter what, your business, your work, wherewith I have appointed you, is to go and teach, You could, is to go and train them up. The same thing, what was the work of the priest in the past, the work of the pastor teacher now. In the past, Lamad, he starts with the book of Leviticus chapter 4. He goes on to teach them, teach, 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 teach. Whenever we find the strong code number 3925, Lamad, 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 we find the failure of the work of Lamad. Even in Isaiah chapter 26 in verse 9, what we were looking yesterday, first if you establish the judgments of the Lord of God in the earth, then the idols or the nations of the people will come and they love to learn from you the righteousness of God. Again, the word learn is Lamad. But you should be first established in the judgments of the word of God. If you're not established, if you're not making it up to happen in your inner mind, in your inner mind, in your inner thinking, no way, dear brethren, the nations cannot come and learn from you the righteousness of God. Look upon your lives, you just look like the heathens who have entered into the temple. Is crying over here to God the Father saying that, Lord, heathen have entered into the temple. You are no way far better than heathenic styles in your pulpits. You are no way far better even in your appearance. You don't even look. Which God the Father demands to be holy and blameless in his presence all the days of your life. Then why would you expect delivery from the Lord? Why would you want to be not sale? If you're not having an intention to grow up like a grammatist joining as disciples. Why do you want your day of atonement? In simple terms, why do you want to survive if you're not changing? If you're not having a true repentance in your heart. Pharaoh acted. He found at last to be drowned. <laughs> when you're acting, your heart has been hardened. He showed to them ten plagues. The first three plagues they copied and they thought they could be great. No, dear brethren. The will of God the Father to smite even the Philistines of a thousand men and call to be the place en -Hakare. You know, the jawbone of an ass. Today we are like the jawbone. Sliving off. Every thought that goes against the word of God and we have to find this analogy over here. If Ahitopal would get 12,000 men against King David, and we calculated that for every one hour, for 12 hours in the morning time, again 12 hours in the evening time, if ever you go 6 to 6, the Hebrew school of thought, again from evening 6 to morning 6. So the first 6 to 6. 
So, 6 to 6, 12 hours. In the 12 hours you divide by 12,000, you will get for every hour 1,000. And how you have been strengthened today in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, you know, like the way how Samson took the jawbone of an ass and he slipped off. For every hour 1,000 men, like the Philistines, like the thousand men who are driving your mind from the word of God, who are not inculcating your soldiers to be strengthened day by day in the word of God and face the great challenge which God the Father has given for us in this church age to see the end of all perfection, which is to go and make disciples of all the nations. And every believer should have minimum seven shepherds and eight principal men being trained under his training. So there in Micah 5, 5, we read seven shepherds and eight principal men, but we count it to be the shepherds or the people who are growing up into grammatias, joining as disciples under your ministry. And that doesn't mean only to the pastor teacher, but every believer, because you have been given the ministry of reconciliation, the ministry of or Yom Koper, what we call over here, propitiation, so that you could be covered. So for every one hour, you're getting thousands, and for every one hour, you should be like a Samson, Using the worthless weapons, which are we now, Lord God hasn't called the mighty or the strong. The base things he has called to confound the strongest things. The foolish things he has called to confound the wise ones. That's what we be are. How? Only when you look and understand that the temple of the living Lord of a God should be filled up, should be made known or should be thought of nothing but the word of God. Only till that time, if you have this great thinking that the temple of the living Lord of a God should be filled with the word of God, then only you can snuff off those thousand fallen demons which are going to be against you every breath. For every one hour you have, so knock it out. Like the way how Samson gives an illustration why the figure thousand has been entered there. Every one hour. People will come and say, let's go do this, let's go do that. But you should say, no, first I have to give to the word of God. And why we have been said for every one hour? Because in Ephesians 5.16, it has been said, redeem the time, purchase the time. The days are evil. So how do you purchase the time? Always being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, because we have been told, worship Lord God, the Father in heaven, in spirit and in biblical truth. And it has been binding for us day. It is a must that we have to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, breath by breath. So the weapons of your warfare, the jawbones of an ass, <laughs> what did you do? You slip off. That's the power what God the Father could give. Though they tied him up with the ropes, we read that. They were like a flax melted off in the viewpoint that you are going to take a decision to gun up as a disciple's. Growing up into grammar tears. Now if you want to look again in Judges chapter 15, because in one of our tape we covered that. This is what it happens over here, beginning with verse number 7 and following. Though you done this, yet will I be avenged of you, and after this I will cease. So he goes, he smote the hip of the things of the foxes, he ties the tails and then put into the fire. And now he said, in verse number 12, they said unto him, and he goes on to the mountain, the things happen there, you can read it. We are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said, Swear unto me that you will not fall upon me. The word fall is called to be, saying that you will not encounter a paga. We read the word. So, in your mouth of your standards of your strength or in your viewpoint, you will not fall on me. And they spake unto him, saying, No. But we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into the hand. But surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. And here we read, And when he came to pass unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And the Spirit of the Lord God came mightily upon him. And the word mightily we looked. And on this viewpoint we studied. So the word mightily meant to say salak. And the word salak meant to say, No matter whatever may be the pressures of life, you are going to grow up as a disciple and you are going to make up a wall of fortification. This is what we read. Mightily, when the spirit advanced, then what happens? So he says, when it came upon him, the cords. So what are the cords? These are the distorted thinking in your body. So that's what the thousand men for every second, two or three, or for every second, 51, if it is one like 85,000, what we read from Assyrian camp. 
for every second if the 50 ones just leave it off because they tie you with the cords cords are nothing but distorted thinking in your body and that's why he says in Psalm 79 1 he then have entered into the temple of Lord Go back and look how much of distorted thinking you have in your pulpits, you have in your church, you have in your practices. What exactly simple thing the word of Lord God says every day, carry your cross, follow me, then only are worthy of disciples. In Matthew 7, he says, you have to do the will of God the Father. Then only I can say that you, I have known you. If not workers of iniquity, depart from me. For truth, for truth, I say unto you these things, he said. How stupid we are still. You are bind up with the cords. The spirit of the Lord of a God hasn't descended upon you mightily yet. As Lord God would say in Luke chapter 4. And he went along to build the work of Isaiah 61. Which we have to do from verse number 2b. And the same thing what they pray over here. In Psalms Hundred and uh, Psalms 94 in verse number 16 and following to build back. Once again the things pertaining to the word of God. To build back. Morning, evening and at noon we concentrate on the word of God to build back. But you look, Lord God the Holy Ghost hasn't been descended upon you yet. So the two cords, what they are, distorted thinking in your body. The thinking which is not in accord with the word of God. So dear brethren, he says over here, that the spirit of the Lord of God came upon him, the two cords that were upon his arms. So we read the word arms over here. Arms are nothing but not using your fingers to overcome in your thinking so that you can say that you are a scribe growing up by cracking out every distorted thinking. So the spreading ability of the arm, which can go and write the word of God, which can become the mind of Christ. So the two hands have been bound up with distorted thinking. Today, no many, today, many people you just go back and look. Though we ask them to join as disciples, grow up into grammatias, and grammatias is nothing but writing the word of the Lord of a God. They readily have an answer for Second Corinthians 3, saying that already upon our hearts we have been the living epistles of the word of God. So why we need to write the word? So you know your hands have been bound up. Why we ask you to write the word of God? It's the best way of concentration. That's what God the Father intends in Deuteronomy 17, 18 to the king. As though we look upon the Bathsheba discourse in Proverbs 31 when she asks three questions. What? 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 What my son? What the son of my womb? And again she asks the question, what the son of my woes? So here when the king is ascending the throne, he has to be a scribe grown up. That's what the principle we find in Deuteronomy 17, 18. And now here every believer in Christ is called to be a king and priest. In the privacy of your priesthood, you confess your sins and you get back to the fellowship of the Lord. And as a kingship, you have to make up your spreading ability of your arms. But you have been tied up with ropes. You're not using the thinking why the word of Lord God says, scribes are the people who will write a word of God. You have not understood Matthew 13, 52 in comparison with Matthew 28, 19. You haven't really understood why you have to be engraved upon your soul. The right and unique word of my Christ. But when the Spirit of the Lord of God would come or would descend upon you or would make you to work mightily in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, you would go back to first write the word of God. Because your arms have been tied up or your arms have been tied up. The spreading ability of your arm has been tied up with two ropes. Distorted thinking in your body. So when the spirit comes, what will happen? He says it will become like a flax. So a flax is nothing but it is a work of their mouth and their thinking process and having that to be the authority. So here we look, the mouth or the standards of them, what we call the munching process or the process of having that great authority in their life. He says, these three things will be erased. You know, people today, they often fear about what the other men say to them. 
So that's the first thing what we call the mouth. The second thing what we look, the thinking of them. And the third thing what we look with what authority they are saying them. So all the time every individual believer should wake up. They should understand. If anyone is opening up his mouth, if his thinking is not according to the word of God, his munching process is not according to the word of God, his mouth or from where he is having that information, he should ask that authority. Because he has in himself the standards of making curtail or having to follow some denominations, having to follow some uh, visions or some other things which are stupefied because now no visions, no prophecies. What you have in the completed canon of scripture, that alone you have to take in and do it now. And that you have to dig the word from the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. So like flags, it meant to say, ask the opening of the mouth of their authority, the thinking process of their authority, whether they have taken it from the original Hebrew Greek or Aramaic or they have taken from some other stupid translations. And with what authority they come? Do they come with the authority of the word of the Lord of a God or do they come because God Father has not sent them yet they have come running, he says in Jeremiah 28. If they would have come by me, if they would have been sent by me, they would have made it to learn the counsel of the entire word of God. But since I haven't sent them yet, they ran for themselves. So here we understand the beauty, saying that flags. So dear brethren, the Hebrew word for this flags is called as piste, P-I-S-H-T-E-H. -E and that is just like a fiber material. But here we have in the pictographical representation, the mouth of them what they talk, the munching process from where they gather, and the authority with which they talk. So these three things, the mouth, the munching process, and the authority, these three things from where they have come. So he says, when the Lord God, the Holy Ghost, will ascend, so he will go back like a scribe. The two ropes will become, which have been tied up upon his hands, arms, that is so that they cannot use the ability of the strength of the hands. It will become like a flax. That means you question their authority. You know the reason why Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was being uh, taken to cross one among the, the things when he was sorting out, questioning their authority, they sought him to put to death. He never compromised with the truth. Today, many pastors are not questioning the authority. They are just looking into the mirrors because they want to please you. For every two or three days, if the mustaches are grown up, they want to go and shave and they want to appear normal. If there's a beard grown up, they want to go and shave and they want to appear normal. Not natural, normal. <laughs> if not, the congregation will think, what has happened to him? But being natural, you will be remembered in the sight of God, though may, though may not be in the sight of man, but in the sight of God, because it is his creation. But you mould yourselves, you act yourselves, you get degenerated to the standards of lies, you will be remembered by men because men love such a chingy as men. Men love now entertainment. Men love now, now in the standards of human ecstasy. Men love no edification today. And edifying is a great source of your growth. Edifying is a great source of your peace. Edifying is a great source of your comfort. Iconomia, constructing according to the word of God, Ephesians 2, 20 through 22, the teachings of apostles, the teachings of the prophets, and our one chief cornerstone, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, built to be into the Naon temple of the Lord, not Hiron, but Naon, the holy of the holy place of the Lord. And how simple the word of the Lord of our God is all the time to Memnisco. He says in Second Peter 3, be remembering all the time the teachings of the prophets, the teachings of the apostles. But today men want the teachings of the so-called apostles and so-called prophets who are not at all from God. But yet they tag themselves as their prophet, yet they tag themselves as their apostles. These are really idiotic morons. When the completed canon of scripture talks about the pastor teacher, they don't talk about that. They have all the time this flattering titles being occupied for them, saying that these are the prophets, these are the apostles, these are liars to the core. 
So you should ask, what is the authority? And he says that was the burnt, it was the flax was like a burnt one. And why does it be like a burnt one? Because now in your entire body, you want to see and take nothing but with proper inspection, the word of God. That's the word fire. You know, we look upon in Matthew 3.18 when he says he will baptize, Luke 3.18, not Matthew. He says baptizing them with fire and with Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost and fire. What is fire? Nothing but now in your body, you are so prepared that you look only the divine viewpoint or you take nothing but the word of God, which is in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, and that will be your only thinking and that's the fire. In your body, you are being, or you are making up your body because as a man thinketh, so he is. It is not the food what you eat that's going to affect the body. It is what the thinking goes on. Because people don't understand every concept of things in this life related to emotion or desire is thinking. If your thinking is straight, that's what David did over Goliath. Having to say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who is defiling the name of my Lord God of hosts? You know, thinking. He was not of a caliber greater than Goliath. Thinking, thinking, thinking is what it makes the difference. So, burning with fire over here, what we say, flax burned. The first thing, what with what mouth they talk or what munching process they have, with what authority they talk, you burn it off. How? Because now in your body, you have nothing but the word of God as a viewpoint. You should ask if any preacher is asking you. If he's preaching, you should ask him, is, there found, is, there, is this is found in the Bible? You know, that's what today many Christendom believers don't do. They don't ask. They don't go to question the authority. But yet they get deceived. They don't ask the questions. They don't ask the things of the authority. They say, he's preaching. Let him preach. Our duty is to come and pay weekly once some money, monthly once some tithe. Though the New Testament doesn't talk about the tithe, they want emphasis upon the tithe. And when you don't emphasis upon the tithe, they may stop your salary. Yet he doesn't mind for it. He goes further to teach the word of God. But people, they know, if they don't emphasis upon the tithe, they will not get the money. When they don't get the money, they are absolutely ruined. So, dear brethren, we need to be very careful about these things. So, first, if your thinking is not being fixed firm enough in the Word of God, then you are going to ruin, you are not going to burn. Then you are not having the power of the fire in you. The power of the fire, if whether, if whether the fire is operating in you or not, we have to look back in your thinking and you have to constantly say, Thus said the Word of God, it stands written. You know, when Apostle James or Peter or Paul, in fact, indeed, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whenever they came, they said, it stands written. It abides written. They opened up their mouth. What exactly was there in the Word of God? Nothing else than that. The thought saying, it stands written. They never added anything. So you should ask them if they're telling, if you want to burn or if you want to have a fire to be burnt in you. Because already your temples have become hedonic to the cause. You have to be the temples of the living Lord of a God, but your temples have become heathen to the cause. It will be burnt off. At the judgment seat of Christ, as such how you're going to construct your home. Whether it is with gold, silver, precious stones, or wood, or stubble, it will be burnt off. So prior to that, first you burn now the cords which have been tied to your hands by becoming a scribe. Carry out all of this distorted thinking in the fire to be burnt off like a flax. So that you ask them, where you get this word? Where is there in this authority you are talking about? So that you should know first what is the word. You know, much of the failure in the present Christendom is that people have not read the Bible, even in the translations. And they think the program to run 52 weeks, in that every one hour of preaching, if it is a solid one or not, minimum one hour they go to in the entertainment or emotional standards. Just imagine how fast a reader can read. In one hour he can read at least one book, 
In 52 weeks, he cannot even cover the entire book. He cannot because it is only 52 hours. So in that 52 hours, he tries to teach you all mannerism of entertainment or prosperity gospels, blessing gospels, comfortable words. And in that time, even you don't have time to read the word. Because you are so happy to concentrate on rituals. You are so happy to concentrate on the details of life of you. And at the cost of being burning those ropes with fire. Because that's how the spirit of Lord God would work. It will descend upon you like a fire. And the fire will make you to have in your body the thinking. And that thinking will make up your viewpoint of eyes to be fixed, to take nothing but the word of God. You should ask, what does the word say? That's it. Not what the report says, not are the things of this world that are happening now. You should ask what the word says. That's the final. That's the final word it of it. Because ultimately, the word of the Lord of God will stand forever and forever, though the heaven and earth will vanish off. Not the religion dogmas of these men who have been written by men or inspired by men. We have the infallible and inerrant theonistas of Lord's mind. So we have to ask, what does it say in the Hebrew? What does it say in the Greek? Ask exactly what the word says. So ask them, is there in the word? If it is there in the word of God, then your mouth will open up as per the word of God. If not, you need to look according to the mirrors. You need to write according to the standards of the designs of pleasing this crowd, saying that I have in me all the operation of the gifts. <laughs> That's what a idiotic moron would say. He never understands that the temporary spiritual gifts have been seized off, but yet he says, I have in me all the operation of the gifts. And he goes on to deceive the church. But you do not understand that the completed kind of scripture when the perfect thing would come, all these things will be seized off. And you love to go and watch the healing process, the miracling process. And that's what you pray like Psalm 17 and 9, deliver us and make us purge. And delivering is what? You think you have been delivered from sickness, delivered from weakness, delivered from every mannerism of troubles. No, you haven't. You have been further taken into the deep step of darkness. By following such cult, by following such men who never exercise or open up your eyes to look into the word of God and know what exactly is your true peace, what exactly is your true deliverance. Christ our Lord of our God said the true deliverance is knowing the truth. And when you know the truth, have a conscious clear towards God and towards men all the time. You are absolutely delivered from every mannerism of sickness. Because your body reacts what it has been thinking inside. And if the thinking of your soul is through the faith of the word of the Lord of our God, there is nothing that can act, act against that faith. You will examine yourselves that you are not reprobates. You'll examine yourselves that you're not in the fellowship of the deeds of darkness. But rather where you are now, you're reproving them, a glanco them. You'll examine yourselves very carefully about these things. And that what happens, dear brethren? Men love not the light. But here, the spirit of the Lord of a God in the form of the fire... It makes your eyes to constantly fix upon the word of God. It makes your thinking to be constantly fixed upon the mind of Christ. It makes your body to be constantly bending or knowing or learning or making efforts to know the word of God alone. Nothing else than that. So dear brethren, the flax, how he says that the ropes have become like a flax, being burnt with fire, and the word fire is nothing but in all of the vigor and valor of the elephant energy of the word of God, and what exactly the munching process. You know what, dear brethren, when you look upon the teachings of this man, which are not in accord with Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic, surely you will find how many faults are there. So fire is all the time which exposes you. 
and the ability why God the Father gives to the pastor teacher to learn the word of the Lord of God in the original languages of the scriptures is that it shall not be in that fire. He can pull as many as he can from that fire. So that tomorrow when God the Father could judge them, he could find that they were in accord with the word of God. So fire is nothing but the aleph energy of the body, given them the munching process to think according to the mind of Christ. So burning with fire. And then he says, his bands, the word bands is nothing but the pressures in your mind not to think upon the word of God. That's how Satan puts band. Satan can give you infinite number of solutions, but not to have faith in the word of God for any problems. And the sad part is people go to worship even like the necromancy, witchcraft, even they're Christians. And they think early once if we can uh, make a festival to this uh, idol, or if we could go back and bow down to this idol, we will have this wealth. Now the bands which are towed up, first the ropes, now the bands. That's what exactly you find. The bands is nothing but the pressure in your thinking. That's what we are asking you to be very alert every second behind you. If it were by the counsel of Ahitophel, false men who are not in accord with the word of God, who will not make you to grow up into gravity as joining as disciples, at least two or three behind you. If it were like the one like eighty five thousand counsel of Satan against you, Make sure you will be having behind you 51. Every second, 51 negative thinking men or 51 bands and, and ropes tied up. So he says the word bands, the pressure, pressure in your mind. And what is that pressure? Not to have faith in the word of God. So he says first, the ropes were become like flax and burnt with fire. His bands were loosed. And the bands were loosed in the sense no pressure. And his blood also couldn't find any pre any pleasure, any pressure, but rather they were melted off, they dissolved off. And from where? They were dissolved off from his hands. So the things what they tied up, they became free when the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would come. The same thing with your life as well. You have been now on this earth, thinking that you are the temple of the living Lord God. No, you are not. You are into the hands of Ethan. Therefore, they have tied up ropes. They have put bands. The powerful fire of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, is not melting away because you don't open up your mouth to ask them with what munching process you are speaking in authority or what is the thinking in their body so that the thinking process in their head or viewpoint of life could be fixed with the word of God. You don't ask that. So you are not burning them with fire. So dear brethren, he says that. When the Spirit of the Lord of our God came mightily upon Samson over here in this case, he says, the cords were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire and his bands that were loosed. And now he finds the word found is matza. <laughs> and this is what his blood encounters. What does he find? A new jawbone. The word new is called over here as Tare, T A R I Y, and the word meant to say fresh. In you know, every morning, God the Father comes up to give His fresh grace upon us. Morning by morning, they have been renewed. Fresh, fresh, fresh. So, God the Father, what does He find? He finds through this Samson a fresh new jawbone. And the word, that which has been containing in His head now, which has filled in His basket through the Word of God. And the word jawbone is called again the thinking, dear brethren, as leke, L E C H I Y. And leke over here meant to say that he has found a disciple oriented man who has built up his wall of fortification only to become the disciple. So when he has found such kind of a leke one or who has been established with the things pertaining to be a disciple oriented to God and has built up his wall of fortification. That's the jawbone. And what is this as? We look as the word says to be as camor. And the word camor over here, it meant to say 
which is going to take no matter whatever may be the pressure in life. It has built a wall of fortification. It is going to follow the path of the renovation of the standards of thinking. So whether it may be any pressure or not, it would just carry its cross like a disciple and get along to the work of God. So that's the word we find as a jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand. The word put forth is called very, very important as shalak. It meant to say he has been developing his munching process to be nothing but a disciple and he has built such kind of a wall of fortification. That is put forth his hand. So he says other things I know not. Today, every believer should wake up to this fight. He should come to put forth his hand. He should say to the pastor teacher, make us disciples because we are born disciples in Christ. So that you can go and make disciples of all the nations when you grow up into grammatias. That's put forth. So when the spirit of the Lord of a God will descend... It will make you to become a disciple, a firm disciple by putting forth your hand. That is what making up your hands to write the word of God. And what did he do? He took it. So now the word took it is called to be lakak. So as a disciple from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, his thinking is firmly fixed like a wall of fortification to think nothing but if God wanted me to be a disciple, what I should be. So what is my work? Then I should grow up as a grammatist. That's what he meant to say, taking it. He lacked it. And what did he do? He slave. The word called over here as naka. That meant to say crush. In his vigor and valor, the ability what God the Father gives him every day, the physical strength as well. You know, in the case of Daniel, we looked, his knees were like the knees having a cap of iron. So that's the word. So he naka, in his vigor and valor, he's crushing in the sense, you know what? He's growing up to become like a grammatias. And how did he crush them? He says, he crushed a thousand men. That means the yoke every day, what Satan keeps. He says, no, I will take the yoke of the burden of the Lord as my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says in Matthew 11. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. So Lamentations 3.27, carry the yoke of the burden of the Lord of a God while you are in youth. A thousand is all the time a man who is having that yoke, Aleph, meant to say, the yoke of making disciples, the yoke of opening up your mouth according to the word of God. So he doesn't compromise that. So this is the yoke. So he slave have thousand men, whether they will be followers or not, whether they will come to know about this or not, his work is to go every day to be in the word of God. So when he has been taking in every day, everything according to the mind of Christ, he reaches the figure called to be thousand. And then he says, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of an ass, I have slain a thousand men. That should be your song in this pilgrimage. The jawbone of an ass, what we read, which meant to say, making up the ability that you will be like the standards of a grown-up grammatias joining as disciples, having that uh, wall of fortification. What do you make? You make heaps upon heaps. That meant to say what? You go on to be shamer them or kamora. It is a version of the word, but it has to be kamar. That meant to say he has heaped up. He has put them in the standards of heaps upon heaps. Come or come or. Every day, every breath of your life, in every one hour, thousand men should be heaped up. And by that we meant to say, when you are growing up into disciples, all the time having in your mind to join as disciples and growing up into grammatias, thousand men of fallen angels, they should be heaped up. They should say, saying that this man thinks nothing but the word of God. So we cannot fight against him. Because he goes in that great system of faith. So heaps upon heaps, every hour, heaps upon heaps. 
and your song should be as he said jaw bone of an ass that is like the slaves unto christ what he has kept for us we come over here every day to gather in the word of god and as we are gathering the word of lord god every day we come to be in the standards of growing up in grace in the standards of making up the things pertaining to as our blood to be the disciples as our blood to have thinking of the word of god so like that with the jaw bone of an ass i have slain the thousand men every hour that should be the tagline Every hour, fallen angels should look thousand men fallen apart. Because you know every hour you're going to give to the word of God. Every hour your thinking is as a disciple. Every hour your thinking is like a grammatius in Christ. And then in verse 17, it came to pass when he made an end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone. That means you're no longer like a disciple, but you'll be grown up into a scribe and call that place Ramat Lehi. And the word Ramat Lehi meant to say that the height of a Jabon. So every time you win the tower, it should be as a Ramat Lehi. And afterwards we look, he was sore a thirst because it's a great physical combat. But now we have our spiritual combat. So the angels came to minister unto my Christ. So in the same manner, God the Father keeps his angels all the time to provide you the things needed in your life. So do not worry about that. So he was sore a thirst. The word meant to say he was having that great kind of a thirst because of that work what he has done. And called on the Lord and said, you have given this great deliverance. Here he uses the word great again called to be Gadol. That means in his structure he has edified every thought to be like a disciple in Christ. And the word deliverance is called to be Sha'a, what he has made, the munching process according to the viewpoint of the word of God. So he says, you have given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant. You know, the word, what we call servant is Abad, meant to say they go on to do continually the same witness every day. It's a great deliverance in the hands of his servants. So he makes his eyes to be in the standards of his body, in the work of nothing but getting every thought into captivity for Christ. And now he says, and now shall I die, moot for thirst, and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised, but God clave and hollow place. You know, when you do the will of Lord God the Father as the wave and hugger Christ to God for the water, now he makes between the two lines of this jawbone of her as he goes on to put a hole. And through that hole that was in the jaw, there came out water. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he was Kaya, loving to live 2421, so that he can become now 2425, but he failed. So wherefore he called the name thereof an Hakare, the word meant to say over here, saying that spring of one calling, and then that an okore unto this day. And he judged, the word judged over here, he called to be Mishfat. Again, he brought the thinking process of those men to be according to the authority of the word of God. Judged in the days of the Philistines, 20 years. In the days of the Philistines is what now? The days of Satan being the prince of the power of this air. So the days of your life that you're going to live, he has put over here 20 years, but you know very well, till he could finish the work of the Lord of a God, he's going to keep you alive no matter what. So dear brethren, when we have such kind of a great work for every one of a thousand heaps upon heaps, which we need to put, and God the Father would deliver you out, he would make a hollow place, which is not possible. They can get the job on off an ass and they can get, but hollow place, they can make a hole. But who is going to provide the water? It is Lord God. As the way how he provided the food through the ravenous nature cross to Elijah. As the way he opened up the rock and spilled the water to them. As the way he made the waters to be divided asunder. So who can make that? Only my Yehovah Elohim. So fight the Lord's battles. That's what he says over here in verse 16. With jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of an ass, I have slain thousand men. What a great truth we have over here. The weapons which may not find fit. <coughs> As someone would say, mightier than the swords, it is a pen. Like the same thing, we are not into the battle of the physical <coughs> combat. <coughs> but to become the pen of our describer, the tongue. 
when you have been trained to become the tongue of the learned. <coughs> That's what it is. When you have become the tongue of the learned, he says it will be mightier. But what is happening to dear brethren? Though you have been given equal privilege and equal opportunity to fight the Lord's battle, yet you haven't grown up. So coming back to Psalm 17 and over here, dear brethren, we find in verse number one, heathens have entered. And what did they do? They have made the holy temple defiled. The word defiled is called to be, as the Hebrew says, tame. That means they have made it to be impure. Even you're thinking, go back and look, it's not pure. It's not in accord with the word of God. It's impure. And they have laid Jerusalem on heaps, which you should lay on heaps, or which you should make them to be heaps, as we read over here in uh, Judges chapter 15 in verse number 16. The word heaps over here, what we find is the word called to be as Shamer. But here the word heaps, what we find in, Jer in Psalms chapter 79, this heap is not the same English heap. Here you find in Psalms 79 in verse 1 as heaps, the word is called is not Shamer, but the word is called to be Ea or double E what you call. And the word double E is nothing but they have made the men to be distorted thinking. But there it meant to say you have made their thinking with the wall of fortification in their blood to be according to the word of God, which they weren't, so they were fallen into heaps. You know, if you don't match the word of God, you are being judged. The answer with our Lord of God is whether yes or no. You have to be compared yourselves to the word of God. If you are not found according to the word of God, then it's no. So that's the heap, what we collect there as a jawbone of an ass. But now over here, the heaps is, they have filled the holy temple with distorted thinking. That's the word, difference between Shamer and Ia. So how did they fill up? They fill up with distorted thinking. That's what he says. So they have filled up with heaps. The dead bodies of the servants they have given to be the meat unto the fowls of the heaven and the flesh of the saints unto the beasts of the earth. You know, here we find two categories. The servants or what they have to be the pastor teachers who go on to give every day the dead bodies like a meat. You know, Death working in us, but life is working in you, said Apostle Paul. The same thing over here. Against the fall of the heavens, the teachings today, what you have in you, dear brethren, they are distorted. They are not having according to the word of God. These are the cultist thinking what you have. So this is the what we find against the angelic conflict, in this angelic conflict against the fallen angels. So the fowls of the heaven is what all the time Satan goes on to give that which is not right. It goes on to corrupt your thinking. That's what the work of Satan is. The way how it deceived Eve, so it should corrupt you. So Apostle Paul says in Second Corinthians, we are not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan. So that's what the point. You should grow up as a pastor teacher. It is not that you have a power to say there is a demon. No, that's all stupid. Look into the word of God. If it doesn't match to the word of God, you know very well it is the fowls of the heaven what they have done, the cultish work. But your body is like a dead body given to them as a living sacrifice. Why? Because he says the dead bodies of the servants. That means every day life should work in you but death in us. That means day by day constantly giving you to renovate the standards of your thinking according to the word of God. You know, that's why God the Father has even preserved the body of uh, Moses. You know, that's his servants. He knows very well how to preserve them because their bodies have been working for the work of God. So he says, unto the fowls of the heaven and the flesh of the saints, that's what you believers, you are to the beasts of the earth. And beasts of the earth, we read, those who have not born again in Christ, that is 2416, they have only a normal life, but not born again, yet you try to give them your life so that they could believe in Christ and be born again. So the beasts of the earth. And then in verse 3, the blood have they shed like water round about Jerusalem. And there is none to bury them. You know, we try to give you every day the word of God, but there is none who loves to care for silly stupid things and for idiotic phonography in the smartphones or in the YouTubes. They have millions of subscribers, even for your cracking of idiotic jokes. But when it comes to the word of God, there is no one who would even look the blood which we have been shed like water. 
So he says, there is none to bury them. We have become a reproach to our neighbors. You know, that's what it happens. For other men whom you have to be a director, whom you have to make them to come back and learn the righteousness of God when the judgments of Lord God have been established in you, but if they should teach them, for them you will become a derision. The neighbors, you will become a reproach. That meant to say, your thinking is not in accord with the word of God. That's the key. And then the neighbors, you will become a scorn. Scorn meant to say, they ask you, are you a disciple? They ask you, where is the, where is the sign of a discipleship in you? Show it. So it will become like a scrawn. So he says over here it will become like a scrawn. And derision. The word derision from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. You will have all the time when they ask you. Are you not a disciple? So he will be pressured up. So he says to them that are round about us. How long O Lord will you be angry forever? Shall the jealousy burn like fire? Till you could come back and confess your sins and purge your sins. Till that time this will be a fight. So pour out their wrath upon the heathen that they have not known thee. And upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. For they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. The reason why the heathen they have come. He says because they have neglected the word of God. That's what we find over there when he said to them. If you neglect the word of God. If the thinking of my Christ has not been established in you. Then quite obviously you will find enemies. The people who, whom you don't. Uh, think even of, they will come, they will rule over you. He said in Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26, the same thing repeats over here. So they cry. But actually, the temple should be taken care of by the pastor teachers over there. And verse 8, Remember not as our former iniquities, he says, and let thy tender mercy speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low. The word very low is called to be in each and every thought of the vigor of life they have come that they don't be the disciples. The word law is very important over here, dear brethren. It meant to say over here as the lal. The word the lal meant to say their every viewpoint of life, what they're going, or every thought, what they're getting into the door is not a disciple. So they say that we are very low, we are not the disciples. Now they cry, Help us, O God of our salvation. And the word for the glory of thy name, the word we read for, the bar kabod. And deliver us and purge us of our sins. And that is what reconcile us again so that we could be disciples growing up into Grammatius for thy name's sake. And they say, Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is their God? Let him know. Let him be made known among the heathen in our sight by the, by the revenging of the blood of the servants which is shed. Let the sighing of the prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power. And then he says, Preserve you those that are appointed to die. And render unto our neighbors sevenfold in their bosom their reproach. Wherefore they have reproached thee. So we the people, our sheep of the pasture, will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth, again the word over here is called to be as Nagad. Or it is not Nagad, but the word has to be over here, so fair. The word so fair is nothing but we like scribes will tell forth the praises to all generations. We like scribes. So they want to show through your life against sevenfold the way how they reproached. Because we know very well we are spiritually alive, but the people who don't have this word of God are believing in Christ. We know very well they are spiritually dead. But those heathens are raging against you. So he says, according to the word of their power, according to the glorious word, which is there in their name, deliver us. Make us to be according to their will. And these things are very, very important, dear brethren, for us. Because the word in verse 9, which we need to still expound, because we have taken much of the time in verse 1 and 2, because that's how the people of the Lord God should do there, particularly to be the temple of the living Lord God. But they became like heathen. He cries out his pain. And when you're happening to be heathen, the heathenist people are raging against you. And that's what the men they are trying to do today in the pulpits. They are still trying to give a reproach. Because of you, the name of my Lord God has been blasphemed among Gentiles. Because you people haven't become the true servants of God to shed forth your blood. To become the saints, the flesh of them, to the beasts of the earth. You haven't. How would you take sevenfold revenge? You can just pray saying that, Lord, give them sevenfold revenge. Render unto them the neighbor sevenfold reproach which they have caused us. But you have to be first grown up. 
so that he would say, We are the sheep of the pasture, give the thanks forever, and we will show forth. Again, the word so fair, it is not Nagad. Nagad meant to say to declare, but he meant to say, So fair, we will be like scribes for the prize to all generations. And yet, dear brethren, you say still, Help us, O God. And what is that help? Make our viewpoint to use the weapons of warfare which you have given unto us by digging in that which is in accord with the word of God and renovate the standards of our thinking according to the truth. <coughs> That's the principal root help meant to say, to dig and take the truth. O God of salvation, that is the shepherd who is having in him the process of running through the word of God. <coughs> The great process to protect you from danger. So he says, O God of salvation, the bar glorious of thy name. It's not just for, but the word says the bar. Every thought in our body should be according to thy thinking, O God, we come there. <coughs> and the glory is kabod. The word kabod meant to say, disciples, disciples grown up into grammatias. This grammatias having in their body to get every thought into captivity for Christ. So he says, glory according to thy name. And then furthermore, deliver us so that we at least now will become thy disciples and reconcilize, make an atonement, kafir, so that we will be like scribes having our mouth to be opened in your thinking. And our sins, which have been there, which we have built up a wall of fortification against thy word, for thy name's sake, he says, purge us, because you have given us this grace to repent. If you don't have this prayer, dear brethren, and what for you need to pray, not just that you are going to live a life of peace, no. So we will be the people and the sheep of the pasture, we will give the thanks forever. We will be scribes of thy praise to all generations. Because the heathen are raging and they're coming against thy word and you render them sevenfold when we become thy grown-up grammatias joined as disciples in Christ. Dear brethren, if you don't come back to become the day of atonement in Christ Jesus, our Lord, what he has established, then your sins are not being purged. You die in your sins. And Lord God said unto them, Go and sin no more. Here he says, When I have reconciled you, I want you to be a scribe, opening up your mouth according to the thinking of the word of the Lord of a God to all generations. That's kofar. And if you're not coming to that, your sins are not thoroughly purged, and there is a sin unto death wherewith you shall die, he said. In spite of repeated, give, repeated warnings given to you to grow up into grammatias, joining as disciples and fulfill Matthew 13, 52 in your life, so that you can have a life of great peace, so that you can become a scribe of his righteousness, in spite of repeated instructions given to you. Yet you neglect the word of God. You are answerable to my Christ. And that the judgment seat of Christ you cannot plead ignorance or arrogance. Today is the time for you to come back, to become the servants who have shed the blood for Christ. The death works in us, life in you. The vicarious sufferings we cannot. The mental agony of my Christ, Colossians 1, 24-29. A little part from my side to the sufferings of Christ, which is the great Evidence of token that in nothing you shall be hindered, but in everything you shall use your flesh and body and mind and spirit and soul to the glorification of God the Father to the highest. Like the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps. <laughs> Taking them to the word of God, searching, you don't find them matching, you put them as a heap. Not on the Jerusalem heaps where they are found to be distorted thinking of A.E., the word what we read. But Shamer, the word which says that has to be karma upon karma. Heaps upon heaps. The jawbone of an ass. Lord God should say every hour, using us, heaps upon heaps. If it is like a Nahitopal council, or the Assyrian camp, 
If God be for us, who can be against us? The only thing, do not grieve, squelch, wax, lie, or resist, Lord God, the Holy Ghost, but rather be under the control, the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, and fulfill the demands of the word of the Lord of our God, so that you could be a great good pleasure to God the Father, opening up your mouth when the Spirit advances in you through fire, in making the right word of Lord God to be established, to look natural and not to look to impress men into every two or three days into your mirrors. Dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudible telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is so very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, that with you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the best to teach us, the greatest matter is to carry Satan Lagan. Herald the word in season or out of season, because the diamond from witnesses where which you have been called. The number one diamond from witnesses in willing Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from witnesses, so hear it. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost leadeth us <coughs> to the praise of His glory in His grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O Lord, to have fellowship through the word. Father, you are going to deliver us and you are going to propitiate, as the word Kofair goes to say, those who are ready to make disciples growing up into grammatias joined to the will of God. Yet, O Father, much of the people are not able to realize the importance of being delivered into the standards of your true calling in the church age. Let our Father, according to thy grace, give them the word of the Lord of a God which could enlighten them and which could call them to the reverential fear of their truth, that if they are not disciples growing up into grammatias, they will die in their own sins. So help us, Father, to teach the things according to thy will, as it has been given for us in the word, in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Strengthen us more and more, educate us more and more according to thy truth, so that, Lord, we could speak nothing but the truth, because you have called us into thy glory for the work. In Christ's matchless, pure, most gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Ghost, enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. May Lord God, the Holy Ghost, enlighten and challenge us for your glory. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Father. Amen.